referred to. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Command Your Confidence. This is your channel where you learn the best to enhance your mindset, achieve your goals, and level up in life. Today, I am joined by Thor. How are you doing, Thor? I'm living the dream, Rob. What else would I be doing? Come yeah, on now. Rock on. <laughs> and we're going to talk to, uh, to you today about how you as guys can enhance your sex appeal, charisma, and confidence so you can uh, talk to women, uh, have wonderful dates with women, and more. So let's get rolling on this. So if you haven't already, before we go on the show, please subscribe to the channel. And yeah, let's get rolling. But so, um, Thor, so what is your, what do you think guys need as far as to have in, you know, the right mindset that they need to have to, you know, approach women, you know, or being on a date or if they want to, you know, flirt with a girl sexually? Like, what, what, where do we go from here? That's a really good question. Uh, what type of mindset do they need? Well, the mindset you need, obviously you're hitting onto it, is confidence. I mean, how many times have you heard, essentially, from the women, just be confident? Oh, did you see that guy's confidence? Look, he's walking with confidence, right? I mean, you hear that all the time. So what does confidence actually mean in that context? Uh, well, in some sense, when it comes to dating and sexuality, it means that you need to con her out of her defenses. That's confidence. You have to be that man that strikes that chord with her that she just automatically knows you are in control. Mm -hmm. I like to call that myself. I call that, uh, it's been called a lot of things, you know, in law enforcement circles, it's called command presence. And you all know this, you've been That's around a, an alpha guy that is in charge. Not so much. He's an asshole or douche, but guy, he's just in charge, man. He's in charge of himself. He Rule zero is self-care. The guy dresses right, beard lines are perfect. He's wearing the right stuff. He has a style about him, and he does not shy away from it. He owns it mm -hmm. through and through. And when that's done, that is quite a uh, subcommunication that you're putting out there. I call it dominant masculine presence. Mm -hmm. I actually have a list that I've been working on for my new course on how to, 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 to help guys acquire this this uh, dominant masculine um, presence. There are certain traits that you can exercise uh, body language, communication styles, um, just very simple things that you can put together in small bits and pieces. If you've never done this out of the list of 20 that I have, uh, you're not going to want to do them all at once because we've all seen the guy that shows up eyes wide like this. And he's just, yeah, yeah. Barking orders. Cause he thinks he's being, you know, dominant presence. Well, he's just a douchebag. That is not what this is about. It's about subtlety and timing and knowing your audience. And if you want, I can get right into that. These traits are not necessarily natural. I mean, I think when I start to talk about these, you'll understand these traits can be passed from father to son. A lot of these are social acumen. So if you're slightly on the social awkward side, you're going to, it's going to require a little bit of training. You're going to need to look in the mirror. I mean, let's be serious here. You want to have sex appeal and you want to be able to express yourself and command your confidence in front of women and men. You're going to need to be able to pick up on cues that you hear and you see and respond, not just with your body, but with your face. You're going to need to be able to sit there and Crack a little bit of a smile at the right time, right? Exactly. I mean, this is subtle shit. You know, you don't want your eyes to do something like this, but you do want to be able to fix your gaze. You yeah, want to be able to do things fun, like this. Right, yeah. Right, right. I wanted to ask you something. So you mentioned something, you know, for guys who are socially awkward and everything, how, like, so how will this, your course kind of help them become like more confident and you know like what is what's one thing that you teach that you can tell people on here that you know, will help them with that a guy who might be having a hard time being confident and commanding presence when he's trying to uh, talk to a lady or wants to meet someone that's a good question the approach i use is to use small little bits i'm going to practice one or two particular traits or skills or communication that's it until i master it I'm going to look in the mirror and look at what my face does when I'm talking. I'm going to have a pretend conversation. I might even record somebody and do this. 
On the other hand, if I have someone that's particularly uh, encumbered socially, I recommend they, they join my monthly webinar where other men can actually have practice conversations with them, evaluate mm -hmm. social circumstances. The issues that some people have is they want it all right now. And some of these are things you have to practice. You have to be in the environment. You may get rejected. You may embarrass yourself. So I like to take the small approach. I'll just uh, I'll start with the very first rule that overarches this very basic list that I give out. This is not the comprehensive one, but this is the basic one you have to master if you want dominant masculine presence that's going to enhance your confidence. I mean, confidence is just really just doing something, knowing that you could do it well. Mm -hmm. And being able to extrapolate that into any situation as if you had done it before and mm -hmm. act exactly like that, perform like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, that comes with knowledge, experience. You build it together and now you trust your instrumentation and you go. Uh, so the very first all encompassing rule is rule zero. OK. And, and rule zero is that you present your absolute best at all times you take that right that. there the self-care like every single piece of it is there and yeah. you couple that with the mentality that you are the hero of your own movie you're not an npc no you're the hero it's their pleasure to meet you it, you don't it, need to broadcast it but you need to think it so like so someone who has and you know i you know what i, I like that because um, most people, guys, don't feel like they are the hero of their own film, movie, right. and everything. And that's very, that's a very interesting thing that you teach them. Because you no, know, we all gotta like with anything we do in our life, we gotta believe that we can have. We gotta believe that, yeah, we're a star in our own world. And that's that's very hard for some people, you know. Yeah, and 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 once they're into the course or they're into the webinar, I actually teach some. Um, techniques that was taught to me by a uh a brazilian jiu-jitsu master and this was back in the 90s about visualizations and it's a simple 10 minute technique that you can use every night and essentially you're playing a scene of what you want to accomplish over and over your head after you've cleared all your thoughts and gained control of your mind mm -hmm. there's exercises to do that rid yourself of thoughts and then you have the scene that you had played out what you want to accomplish and you're seeing yourself in third person strong visualization you're doing that right before you go to bed because what happens is much like in hypnosis you enter kind of a pre-conscious state of trance or meditation and this is building in your subconscious this will make actually performing or adopting these traits so much better and the best part about it is if some of this is tied to a goal it becomes a part of your nature oh wow and this is how this i mean this guy basically I mean, uh, through the interpreter, he's basically invented Gracie Jiu Jitsu. I mean, it was Elio Gracie. He has these visualizations and the strong masculine. He's a short guy, but man, he was a hell of a dude. He's since passed. Mm -hmm. I had the fortunate ability at the time to train with him just for a few months. And I, I went to his son's academy for six years. Well, so, I think that was exciting. It very much was. It was in the 90s. I mean, I, I'm no spring chicken myself. I'm, you know, I'm 58 and a half. So I've been around for a minute. Uh, but it's, the, the visualization is a part of this. It's much more in depth. I'd rather get into the traits. And if somebody's really interested, hit me up. You can find yeah. me, you know, at, at rp.thor on Instagram or at my own ch YouTube channel, which is The Dragon Ship. And you can look at me there. So, and that's a very, before we move on, that's a very interesting concept, though, because like you got to like visualize like um, you having success and how you're going to act and you know, feel when you're around a woman and everything is, and, and you want that to be a very positive visualization and, and confident one too, because the more you, you kind of run that mental image in your head, the more that's going to become a reality in your world. Exactly. As, like uh, as Odin always told me, <laughs> <laughs> as you think, son, so shall you become. Yeah, that's very, that's very true. Now, my dad wasn't named Odin, but he might as well have been. Rest his soul. <laughs> <laughs> I was very fortunate. So let's just take a look at a couple of these. Interrupt me, if you will. Okay. But this, I mean, we're talking about sex appeal. We're going to talk about confidence. And believe it or not, if you can incorporate these masculine, these dominant masculine traits, and you could do it subtly without being completely overt. Now, there's a time for it being overt. 
uh, and there's a time not to. But if you can master a few of these at a time, your sex appeal will go through the roof in a social environment. So these are all exercise in a social environment, be it at work, be it at a meeting, be it at the bar, be it at the club. So let's just get started with these. Number yeah, one. I'm stoked. I want to hear some more. Number one, take up space, but don't be obvious. Well, what does that mean? That means you're taking up space, but you're not, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're standing up straight. You're walking into a place. You're not immediately running over to the corner table and sitting, ordering your drink. No, no, no. You're walking around. You have that smile. You're nodding up. You're seeing everybody that's there. You're acknowledging the people that are working there. Hey, how's it going? You know, you're taking up space. You're creating a presence immediately. You can do this anywhere you go. You can go to the restaurant, the whole thing. Okay. You have a style about you. I don't care what it is. It's you. You've adopted. I don't care how crazy it is. Why do you think some of these guys that dress so crazy as punks or emos, they own it and it's attractive. Mm -hmm. No, that's true. To us, it might not be, but if you're owning it, there you go. You're on your way. Another point, and then, be, you know, the, it's got a, it's all in the mind. It's all in right, the mind. Right. And then make sure you're absolutely clean. You know, you're, you're clean. Your self-care is on point. Don't wear dirty clothes. Be where, unless there's a reason to make it reasonable. Uh, and so you, you've taken care of all of that stuff. You don't have to go crazy with spending money. Just look a certain way. Be clean. Be self-care on point. Smell good. The whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. Don't be sloppy. Don't let your gut hang out. Number two, touch people more. Strategically, though, watch any leader. There is a specific way how leaders will shake hands, too. I teach that in the class, too. There is a specific way. So, you know, whoever you're shaking hands with, particularly males, cannot crush your bones. And you are in command of that handshake. And you just establish dominance. I, think about it. Men will try to do that unless they're, you know, they're doing an overhand and they're doing the hug. It's a different thing, but if it's old school handshake, you can establish dominance in there. Mm -hmm. it, it's an amazing thing, but it, there's more time for that. It's not just that. You could touch the woman, you know, you could do it, you time it just right, you're speaking. So touching people more is a way to establish dominance too. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean to come and get up in their space, but to come in and out of it at the right times. Mm -hmm. No, okay? I agree. Uh, and don't inconvenience yourself. One of the examples I use about inconvenience yourself, I have several, of them, but just to be brief here, imagine yourself at a dinner setting and you're across the room and a cute group of women come in and you jump out of your chair from across the room and run over to the other side to pull their chair out. That's not a good move. You just inconvenienced yourself, left your food and jumped over there. Now, I'm going to have you realize the subtlety. You were sitting right next to them and they came in. You could do it. You didn't inconvenience yourself. Do you see the subtle difference? I had to jump up, move from one spot to the other. It's kind of awkward. You think you're doing something to impress. You're getting that day game. No, don't inconvenience yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, and that goes as far as when you're speaking with them. Oh, we're going to do this or that. Could you drive? Well, if it's an inconvenience for you, it's like, no, I'm not doing that. We'll take an Uber. You know, whatever it is, don't inconvenience yourself. Uh, a dominant masculine doesn't inconvenience itself. People inconvenience themselves for him. Mm -hmm. Okay, That's but I'm not going to broadcast it. I'm just going to give them the opportunity to inconvenience themselves for me. Mm, yeah, yeah. The next thing is keep my gaze slightly up. So I'm looking at the camera right now. I'm just going to slightly look up, most slightly, maybe just look right above your eyes when I'm talking to you. Okay. Different cultures are different. Some require you look down, but in our culture, a slight look up opens the eyes and you're going to have that dominant presence. Mm -hmm. um, when you are speaking with people, and if there's multiple people, another dominant masculine trait is people will, will start doing this with their eyes, you know, looking and turning their head. Don't do that. Keep your head still. When someone is talking, if they're interrupting, just leave it. But when somebody's making a point, you want it to show your intent. You want to be able to just say, look at this person here, slowly redirect your gaze and look into a single eye. Mm -hmm. well, do it with a slow blink and don't re-blink. I just showed the most intent, dominant masculine trait, and I am giving full focus to the person that's now speaking. The other person interrupts, I might go, yeah, let the other person finish. So you're showing like fo focus by with the gaze. Yes. And you're having that connection. Yeah. And Don't everything. be quick to flirt those eyes. Watch. And you know what? You Next time you're out, watch when there's a group of women. Watch what they do. 
You'll see. Okay. And then when a woman's highly interested, you watch what she does. You know, women are very good with eye movement and they appreciate when a man's like that. Now, there's a risk with that. And that's why I say if you do too much of this, you're going to look like a puffed up douchebag. If I get locked that gaze at the wrong time or too much, I'm a creepy asshole. Mm -hmm. So you got to practice a little bit slow, right? Mm -hmm. Have some guys you can bounce these things off of. Also, um, make yourself comfortable wherever you're at. That doesn't mean to slouch. But as I'm sitting here, look, my shoulders are back. My arms are up. My head is up. But I am comfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, and if I happen to be in a social circumstance, I'm going to spread my legs. I'm going to lean back a little bit. Like I got nothing to worry about. Mm -hmm. I'm not like this listening. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nope. Watch, watch Andrew Trait in some of his interviews. Not when he's animated, but when he's intently listening. Mm -hmm. That's a good body language right there. 